Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sid Nasnadgar. I am a PM with Amazon and I'm here to speak about consumer versus enterprise product management. Uh, but before we start, uh, a big thanks to the product school for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. It is a great way for me to connect with uh, the rest of the PM community and share you know, some of my learnings uh, from my experience. So let's quickly uh, go over our agenda for today. Uh, now I will start off with a brief introduction on myself. And then we will go into uh, the topic and uh, basically understand the different type of uh, you know, consumer and enterprise products, who are the users, uh, you know, who, do, who are all the stakeholders within these products. Uh, then we will uh, basically take a look at how the user needs vary based on the type of the product. And finally, uh, we will uh, get into understanding how we manage the stakeholders, what is the complexity uh, that we have to deal with as our stakeholders change and what, how does it impact our overall build velocity? So to start with uh, an intro on myself. Uh, so uh, I describe myself as a product management generalist. Uh, I have uh, about uh, 13 plus years of uh, experience in product management space. Uh, I have worked on a variety of products from consumer to enterprise. Uh, right now I am with Amazon. I work on Alexa. I previously also spent some time here on the retail side, uh, you know, bringing uh, to life some of the products for pets. Uh, I also spent some time at Meta uh, where I was uh, leading uh, this PM role for uh, bringing real-time communications, such as audio, video, AR, VR calling to a variety of uh, Meta's apps and devices. Uh, and prior to that, uh, I've also spent time in the satellite telecom industry, uh, university software industry. I uh, also founded a startup that built automation solutions for tracking of or for mining industry. Uh, I do have a technical background uh, and somewhere down the line, I got an MBA that kind of helped me transition more into a formal PM role. Uh, I love PMing. I uh, really think it's a great way for me to feel more connected with the users and eventually understand you know, what the customers want and work backwards from there to build great products. So uh, to start uh, in our topic of consumer versus enterprise product management, let's start thinking about what are we building and whom do we build for? So we have, uh, we broadly categorize most of our products as consumer and enterprise. That's the most uh, you know, common perception out there. We think that there might be only two types of products. Now, uh, that's a great place to start. Uh, and that ideally, uh, basically, you know, it is the way to think about whom we are selling the products to. In this case, we are mainly thinking about whether we are selling the product to a, a business or an organization, in which case it's an enterprise, or are we selling it directly to the end user, uh, is the consumer. However, uh, in reality, uh, there might actually be more than just those two flavors. Uh, there are buyers, there are builders, and there are users. Uh, take this for instance, you create a product and you put it out there. In many cases, the person who buys the product will not necessarily use the product. So uh, we can define these three roles very, very broadly as uh, you know, buyers are the customers who want to buy your product because they see value in it. 
uh, whether it's for their personal use or whether it's for their enterprise or whether they want to just gift it to someone. Builders are the customers uh, who build other products using your products. For instance, uh, if I were to go and purchase uh, in a bricks to be, to build my home, I'm and I'm I'm a builder. Uh, I'm I'm building homes for someone else. Uh, that's those are that's the uh, you know that's the role that the builder plays in the ecosystem. And finally, the users uh, are the uh, end customers who interact with the final end product or what the final output or whatever we call it. Uh, who are the ones who would be most closely connected with whatever gets built. So in a typical world, we can think of you know, the, you know, buyers, users, and builders uh, as having some kind of a correlation. So whenever we have a product, it is almost certainly purchased or taken over by a buyer. Uh, when a buyer has a product, it can be put to use directly to a user or it can be put to use through a builder where the builder takes that particular product and builds something more. When a builder has uh, a product, the builder can put it in the hands of a buyer or, uh, or can put it in the hands of the user to use it. Again, that depends on the type of the product. Uh, so basically this is a, a, a relationship between uh, these three entities on how they interact in a typical ecosystem. Let's go into what exactly might happen uh, in how many uh, how many hands might the product go into before even ending up with the final user. So users can, in many cases, be multiple degrees away from the product. And the more the degrees away a user is from a particular product, there are more stakeholders involved. There is more complexity involved. And in most cases, based on what we want to get to, will require us to think through more thorough requirements. So uh, in simple words, we can define degree as the, the number of entities between the product and a user. For instance, if uh, a product is a consumer product, a, a consumer buyer purchases it and a con the consumer users use it. In that case, uh, between the product and the consumer users, there is just one entity, which is the consumer buyer, which makes it a first degree uh, of, uh, 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 of uh, between product and the user. So uh, in many cases, the buyer and user might be the same entity, but in many cases, uh, it might be different. As we go more into the enterprise space, uh, we can expect, uh, given the number of stakeholders, given the number of varying complex requirements, we can expect the uh, products to be much further away from the end user. So there might be like you know, third degree users who are fourth degree users in some cases who, who are actually going to use this product and whatever you build might uh, essentially go through the hands of multiple other stakeholders. And that's not all. Uh, it can also be a combination of this. So um, your product might have a third degree user, a second degree user, and a first degree user. In that case, you know, you have to deal with multiple degrees of users. Further, your buyer, builder, and user can either be internal to your company or external, in which Case, the stakeholder management models that you use uh, might be very, very different. So in this case, what should we do? Uh, how do how, what, what mental model should we apply uh, to thinking about how we build these products? So uh, just as I was you know, uh, putting together these slides, in fact, Carlos just made a post 
uh, which I really wanted to talk about, that your users are the only reason why your product exists. So uh, what I want to say here is essentially uh, we have to focus on our users first because uh, you know as we start thinking about where our product is going to end up, uh, it's always the users. And unless we are creating value for the end users, everything in between, like the builders or the buyers, would uh, essentially have no value in your product. Uh, you know, if the product exists because the user exists. Uh, in that case, you know, if you build great products uh, which can tailor great, the needs of all of the users, the builders and buyers would find a lot of value in even doing so. Second is, as we put more focus on the users, what are we doing with the builders? The builders are essentially also building for the users. So it's our job to you know, make it easy for the builders to focus on the users. And that's how we are actually creating value uh, for uh, the whole ecosystem of buyer, builder, and users, whether they're enterprise or whether they're consumer. And finally, uh, when we think of buyers, um, we have to create the right marketing message for them. We have to let them know that their users are getting the right value out of our products. And so uh, the product makes a lot of sense for them to go and buy. So let's uh, quickly take a look at you know a couple of examples, a very simple examples on well, who might be you know, the buyers, who might be the users, and who might be the builders. So the the, the first one you have here is uh, a simple product, uh, which is a toy. In most cases, uh, the buyer and the user uh, is almost certainly going to be different. Uh, because the buyer is mainly going to be an adult who gives the toy to their child or uh, somebody else's child they gift it to. So uh, basically uh, what goes on here is the product that is being designed has to be designed in a way that it takes into account all the needs and requirements for the end user. But at the same time, uh, we have to market it uh, to the buyer who makes the decisions for the end user. Uh, thinking a bit more along the lines of higher degree of uh, users, let's still look at the second example here. Uh, the second example is mainly about a website builder. Now a website builder um, can be, is, think of it as a wizard that lets, uh, you know, designers or you know, anyone who wants to create a website, it allows them to create a website. Uh, there might be a primary enterprise buyer for this type of a product. Uh, and the enterprise buys this product so that they can start creating websites for their customers. So uh, the prime, here in this case, in the example you might see, uh, you know, a, an enterprise buyer purchases it. Uh, a web designer within and the same enterprise buyer uh, is actually uh, able to use that product uh, to create websites for uh, another enterprise, which in, which here is uh, uh, some travel company called XYZ Travel. And the end product is the website that you have created out of this particular website builder, and it gets used by a consumer who is a traveler. So at a high level, what we actually built was an end product for the end user. Uh, so basically, if this website builder, only if this website builder is able to create an awesome experience that takes care of all the needs of the final user, then there is value for everyone else, which is uh, the, the primary enterprise buyer, the uh, primary enterprise builder, as well as the secondary enterprise buyer. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are. We also have to think about uh, what are we doing to facilitate the builder to um, um, bring this particular website to life, and that's exactly what this website builder is 
are designed to do. It allows the uh, web designer to bring great products for the end user to life. So basically, uh, it's, uh, we are thinking through multiple layers of stakeholders to make sure that we have great uh, satisfied users and we are tackling, uh, we are bringing great experiences to them. So uh, as we understand uh, you know, the flavors of uh, who are the users, who are the builders, who are the buyers, it is important to un understand that uh, in most cases, although not almost always, uh, the higher the degree of uh, users, the further away they are from the product, the more product uh, complexity is going to increase which means there are going to be more requirements. We'll have to do more trade-offs because we will have to start thinking about uh, which entity to optimize for. So that's when we have to start thinking through who are the, uh, what are the needs of the, each type of uh, our users. So uh, if we look at this particular uh, table here, uh, we'll mainly think about the users first, we'll come to the builders later. Uh, but uh, in most cases, uh, a consumer user uh, is the one that's out there. You know, those are the individuals all over the world uh, who, have, uh, uh, who have a lot of needs. But again, uh, it, it's very easy for us to do research on them through a variety of methods that are available versus uh, an enterprise user it's a business uh, and they have very, very specific needs to make sure that their business functions in a healthy fashion. So looking at the dimension of user research, if we were to think about a consumer user, it's very feasible to go after very, very data-driven uh, user requirement collection process. The most simple one we always talk about is creating a survey. If we were to send out a survey to millions of people and still get like hundreds of thousands of responses, it still uh, gives us a significant volume of data to make informed decisions on what matters to the population or even segments within the population. But that's not the case for an enterprise. We have uh, basically uh, in most cases have to do a very thorough depth plus breadth driven qualitative requirement collection. So this can in most cases happen through one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with all the stakeholders with the enterprises we are working with. Uh, for instance, if you are building uh, uh, a CRM solution, for instance, it will be very important to understand what these enterprises are looking for, uh, what, they, what type of customers they have, what type of data they want to extract, and every company might have very, very different requirements. So uh, at a high level, uh, it's uh, it's going to be a much more uh, qualitative process. Uh, secondly, uh, the fact that uh, intuitively there are a lot more consumers out there as compared to enterprises out there, and enterprises are probably a lot more higher paying than uh, consumers. So each enterprise user has a lot more value, is a lot more important. So it is possible for us to tailor to them individually versus uh, going after the large scales of consumer users where we are mainly looking for signals that um, speak of the key pain points that they have. Uh, in terms of regulatory requirements, uh, uh, most consumer products uh, can be uh, researched through standard regulatory requirement processes versus uh, enterprise products in many cases might likely have very, very high bar, we might require very high, highly specialized, uh, highly uh, complex regulatory requirements that we might need to take care of. That is because in, in, in most cases, uh, enterprises uh, are also dealing with their own particular users, their own customers, which requires them to comply with certain regulations and which is something that we have to bake in uh, to the products that we are building. Uh, in terms of privacy requirements, uh, so 
uh, over here the caveat is that I'm uh, we're mainly talking of the privacy of the requirement collection process and not the privacy of the product. Privacy of the product is always um, uh, always important, whether it's uh, a consumer user or an enterprise user. But the uh, requirement collection process for consumer users is a lot less uh, data sensitive. Uh, example, when we do anonymous service, uh, most customers are not going to enter uh, now, any sensitive data into the survey inputs. But if we think about the enterprise users, when we interview them, when we are building products for them, there is a fairly high chance that they might be talking to us about something uh, about their business process, which is confidential, something about a product that they are working on, which is not yet launched, which is also confidential. So uh, the requirement collection process is also uh, going to be very, very uh, privacy driven. Uh, in terms of pricing behavior, you know, as we spoke of, uh, most consumer users will be price sensitive versus enterprise users will be quality sensitive uh, given the very, uh, uh, you know, very complex requirements that they have and which we have to meet. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the need flexibility, uh, one might expect uh, the consumer user to be a, a lot more flexible versus the enterprise user. Uh, take the simple example of a phone. Uh, if a phone does not have a certain feature, if you know, customers are looking for a 20 megapixel camera, but they find a great phone with a uh, 15 megapixel camera, that might still uh, satisfy their need. But when we are thinking about enterprise, uh, most of those uh, needs are going to be super rigid because it kind of impacts uh, the business decisions that they take. Going into uh, now the understanding the requirements of uh, the builders and developers. So uh, at a high level, uh, we know that builders and developers are essentially building for the end users. Now, uh, whether they are an enterprise user or a consumer user uh, is less important uh, uh, for the builder. But what is important here is what, how are we enabling them to move faster? There are actually uh, uh, the seven different dimensions that uh, I could come up with. I'm pretty sure there might be more. These have been uh, fairly valuable for me uh, across some of uh, my uh, previous roles. Uh, and those were uh, basically as we built some of these tools to enable developers to do something uh, for the end users, uh, all these questions always came up. Uh, how easy is it to use the tool? Uh, does it help us uh, you know, uh, intuitively build products for the end users? Uh, second is speed of uh, development. Uh, does using the tool or the product that we are uh, you know, supplying to the builders does it significantly speed them up in getting to the end goal of catering to the users? Uh, feature extensiveness, does this tool actually support uh, all the uh, you know, features that might be required by the end customers? Interoperability, can we actually build across uh, in all the platforms and the stuff that we build work with uh, uh, our product uh, variant on some other platform? Versioning. Uh, how, how are we looking at if we're releasing new versions, do we have backward compatibility and so on, so that uh, you know, the builders always have access to some of the latest stuff. Uh, troubleshooting, logging, and telemetry, do we even provide uh, a visibility uh, into the product health, uh, just in case the builders have to troubleshoot something, uh, should, they, should, they, should something go wrong with uh, the product, or just, get some analytics on uh, what is going on with the health of the product so that they are able to dodge any upcoming issues, etc. And maintenance and support. Um, obviously, uh, as we supply products to builders, um, they would always be required to have uh, all the maintenance and support so that there's, they can still uh, you know, cater to the end users. 
So uh, basically, uh, uh, given uh, that there might be uh, very different needs for an enterprise user, a consumer user, and a builder, uh, we know that the needs of whoever we are building for can be very, very different. So uh, the first takeaway was uh, we always have to, uh, not always, but in most cases, it's helpful to rely on uh, data for consumers specifically because it's available and it is possible to get that when it's not available. So if you make data-driven decisions, we are uh, always uh, doing our best to make sure that we are mitigating any risks of our product failing and we are still catering to the best in the best possible way to what we know about the customers. For enterprise users, uh, it is really important to uh, pay attention to uh, detail, understand them well, uh, interview them, and build uh, expertise around uh, their processes so that we know what exactly we want to tailor to. For builders, uh, one of the key takeaways is we have to leverage SMEs. Uh, for instance, if I were to uh, build uh, going back to my previous example of the website builder, if I know what web designers want, uh, I'm able to cater to them in a much better fashion. But if I'm a product manager and I do not have web design experience, uh, it would be really important for me to leverage some of uh, the subject matter experts within my company or even uh, in the buyer's company to uh, make sure that uh, I am able to identify the needs very effectively. So uh, finally, uh, you know, once we know what are our needs, uh, what are the user needs, uh, we know more about the product complexity. I will not go much deeper into how we prioritize. Uh, there are a lot of great videos out there from product school on uh, some PMing models and uh, how we should be prioritizing as PMs. Uh, I will uh, speak a bit more about uh, how we build by uh, the type of stakeholder management processes that we need to uh, get into and how they might be different for either enterprise or consumer. So uh, if you look at this table, uh, one of the things uh, I've written here uh, specifically is uh, stakeholder complexity can be very different from product complexity. Uh, and uh, the reason I say, stay that, say that is uh, for uh, there might be more stakeholders in a particular situation. However, they might not have a lot of influence on your roadmap versus uh, in another situation, you might have uh, very few stakeholders, but they might have a lot of influence on your roadmap. Uh, one example is uh, if you're building internal products, uh, for example, I'm, I worked previously with Meta and uh, some of the stuff I built was essentially tailored to some of the internal teams. Now, what that means is uh, as we cater to internal teams, uh, we are all within the same organization. We have all very, very, very easy access to each other. So as I build out this roadmap, all the internal uh, teams or stakeholders that I'm catering to, at some point of time or the other, I'm going to run into a prioritization issue. I would have to decide I'm building for XYZ, which is required by some teams, but I'm not building for some other features which are required by some other teams. And uh, what I mean by stakeholder complexity is uh, all of these teams out there within my org or within my company will always have some say or they will have access to me in uh, determining what exactly I build. Now, that is not the case if uh, my stakeholders are external. Uh, if I'm Even if I were to build for an enterprise and my stakeholders are external, if I'm tailoring to uh, five different customers and I'm able to think that, okay, I have the resources to build for three of them, I can still only build for three of them. Uh, the uh, external customers, uh, you know, they are more than happy to, uh, whom I'm not building for, they might be more than happy to go sign up for some other product. Uh, so 
at a very high level, uh, no one might expect that uh, the complexity of stakeholders and stakeholder management that we deal with is going to be a lot more complex internally versus externally. And again, there might be certain products which are actually catering to both internal and external customers. Uh, in those cases, uh, again, it would mostly depend on the maturity of the product on how complex uh, the, uh, uh, the stakeholder management process is. Uh, for very, very mature product, you are going to be mainly dealing with external stakeholders because you would have already met uh, the uh, requirements of the internal ones. Uh, but for products who are who just made it to market externally, but have been working internally, those are going to be some of the most complex ones because you have to uh, cater to all of the internal stakeholders. And at the same time, you are getting into the external market where you are thinking about uh, some external stakeholders. Uh, also, uh, the other part you might notice here is uh, now consumers um, might be uh, the consumer users. Are, uh, whenever you're building products for consumer users, uh, the stakeholder complexity might be fairly low. Versus, as you get into more of uh, enterprise and builder space, your complexity increases because uh, you are dealing with stakeholders whom you are working more closely with. So how does this uh, actually impact uh, the velocity of delivery? Now, uh, velocity of delivery might essentially be uh, two things. So how fast can we move as we are building the product? So the more uh, complex the product is, one might expect uh, the longer it takes to build it. And at the same time, uh, the more stakeholders we have to manage, or uh, not necessarily more, but more complex relationships we have to manage, it might still take more time to uh, uh, arrive at a particular outcome. So uh, at a very high level, this is going to be mainly a function of uh, product complexity and stakeholder complexity. Uh, now, uh, as we might know, uh, you know, for consumer products, we can build very iteratively. We can start you know, rolling out features or products uh, in increments. We might not necessarily need to tailor to uh, every particular need, but we can start slow, test out the market through A-B tests, and uh, then decide how to uh, you know, keep building on top of it. So one might expect to be much faster in a consumer space versus uh, enterprise or uh, now, when we're building for other builders. Also, uh, one might notice that uh, as we're building internal products versus external products, we do have some flexibility on moving faster for our internal users uh, versus external users. And that is mainly because uh, as even as we start thinking through the requirements uh, of our internal teams, in most cases, we are able to find workarounds for a lot of things uh, that uh, we might not necessarily be able to deliver. For instance, uh, we build a great product which requires dashboarding. Uh, the dashboards that might be available internally might be a simple pull of data from the data warehouse. So there is a hacky way to get around it. But when we are thinking of uh, building a full-fledged product externally, we have to actually start thinking through what does it take for us to build a data lake, uh, get uh, and all the data that we need into that, how do we build on top of it to create analytics, et cetera. So uh, the long tail of requirements will actually make it a lot more complex, uh, making our velocity of delivery a lot slower when we are thinking externally. Uh, and that also changes uh, as we start thinking about whether we are building a hardware product or a software product. Um, as we know, hardware is a lot more expensive, development takes a lot of time, so uh, it's always going to be uh, a lot slower. So uh, what are our key takeaways? So that was, uh, uh, those were the key areas I wanted to talk about, but uh, what, what can we actually get out of all of this? 
Uh, number one uh, was uh, end users, whether we are thinking about an enterprise product or a consumer product, or maybe enterprise buyers or consumer buyers. It's really important for us to think about the end users uh, and uh, basically enabling everyone else along the way, uh, whether they're buyers or builders, uh, to cater to these end users. So once we do that, we're actually creating value, not only for us, but uh, to the other stakeholders as well. User types. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the second takeaway is that uh, most customers uh, or consumers are you know, price sensitive, enterprises are quality sensitive and will have more, more complex requirements. Uh, and finally, the builders who uh, are some of the developers or other entities we work with might essentially require us to work closely with subject matter experts. Third takeaway is, uh, is stakeholder complexity. Uh, in this case, uh, internal stakeholders uh, are a lot more complex. They do have a lot of influence on your roadmaps versus external ones. So that is something that we have to essentially take into account as we build products. External facing products uh, will have a higher product complexity. Uh, that's because uh, we have to go through all the requirements without thinking through a lot of hacky ways to get there which we can potentially do for uh, more of our internal customers. We have to meet a certain quality bar for our external customers, which makes it very, very complex. And finally, uh, the velocity of delivery, uh, which we know that uh, how fast we can move uh, will depend on how complex our product is uh, and how effectively can we manage all the stakeholders in the process. So uh, there are a few things I've uh, actually not spoken of in the velocity of delivery, which will be important, such as uh, which is mainly we are going to be uh, org related, uh, and whether you have all the resources, etc. But again, uh, putting that aside as a denominator, uh, that is kind of a derivative of the uh, product complexity. So uh, uh, it, it is kind of implied in that. Uh, so uh, that is all I have for today. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. If you post a comment, I will be certain to respond to you. Uh, again, uh, I would also love your inputs. Uh, a lot of this stuff is mainly derived out of uh, my experience, but I'm pretty sure uh, your experience might uh, also uh, add a lot of you know, value and I have a lot of other inputs as well, which uh, I would love to understand from you. So please uh, add some comments um, and thank you very much for signing in and listening to me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks uh, to Product School as well.